During World War II, when soldiers marched through frozen forests, slept under torrential rain, and endured weeks without proper shelter, one piece of gear quietly became the unsung hero of survival, the humble sleeping cloth. Not the fancy down-filled bags you see in today's outdoor stores. Not some modern synthetic marvel. This was a simple, rugged, waxed or treated piece of fabric, sometimes called the sleeping blanket, ground sheet or bedroll sheet, that kept entire armies alive in conditions that would have crippled most modern campers. It didn't zip, it didn't puff up, and yet it worked so well that some soldiers refused to trade it for the newer sleeping bags that came later. Today we're unpacking how this old World War II sleeping cloth outperformed modern bags, why it was so effective, and what survivalists and outdoor enthusiasts can learn from it right now. The cloth that became a soldier's shield against the elements. During World War II, Armies across Europe, North Africa and the Pacific faced radically different climates, from the icy Ardennes to the humid jungles of Burma. A standard-issue sleeping bag just couldn't adapt to such diverse conditions. So militaries relied on multi-purpose sleeping systems. The British used their ground sheet cape, the Americans had the rain cape and shelter half, and the Germans issued waxed canvas Zeltbahnen. These weren't luxury items, they were practical survival gear designed for soldiers who might sleep in a foxhole one night and a swamp the next. What made them remarkable was their simplicity. The sleeping cloth acted as a ground barrier, moisture shield and blanket wrap, often used with wool layers or poncho liners for insulation. The treated canvas repelled rain, resisted tears and trapped body heat without suffocating the user in condensation, an issue that plagues many modern sleeping bags. Soldiers could use the same piece of fabric as a rain poncho, shelter wall, stretcher or even to wrap supplies. This adaptability is what made it legendary among those who lived through it. Why the old cloth worked better than today's insulated marvels? Modern sleeping bags rely on insulation and enclosure. They trap warm air, sure, but they also trap sweat and moisture, especially in cold, wet environments. Once insulation gets damp, it loses efficiency fast. In contrast, the World War II sleeping cloth worked with nature instead of against it. The outer layer of treated canvas created a vapour barrier that let a bit of moisture escape while blocking rain and wind. Inside, soldiers layered wool blankets or uniforms, materials that still retained heat even when wet. This system allowed soldiers to adjust their insulation level as needed, rather than being stuck inside a one-temperature bag. If it rained... The cloth became an outer shell. If it was freezing, they could double up on wool and wrap tight. That's why many veterans claimed they stayed warmer and drier using the old cloth system than with the first generation of post-war synthetic sleeping bags. It was about flexibility, not fancy materials. For survivalists today, that's a major takeaway. The principle of modular layering, using a waterproof outer, breathable inner and adjustable insulation, is still the smartest approach to staying warm in unpredictable weather. It's why modern bushcrafters often return to oilskin bedrolls or wax canvas bivvy wraps modelled after World War II designs. So. How do you apply these WW2 principles in modern outdoor survival? Well, if you spend any time outdoors, you can actually use this same method today. No need for an actual wartime relic, really. Start with a tough, water-resistant outer cloth, like wax canvas or oil skin. Lay it down on the ground first, as your barrier against damp soil. 
Then add a wool blanket or perhaps a modern merino liner as your insulation layer. After that, just fold the outer cloth over yourself burrito style, tucking in the edges to keep out those chilly air gaps. In extreme cold, you can even add dry grass or leaves underneath for a bit of extra ground insulation. This whole system gives you three key advantages. Adaptability, durability, and, honestly, low maintenance. Unlike ultralight synthetics, canvas won't rip easily or lose function when it gets damp. Wool, which has been a natural insulator for centuries, keeps you warm even if your shelter leaks. And when you're finished, you can air dry both layers quickly without worrying about moldy insulation or zippers getting jammed. Now, if you want to replicate the exact WWW2 setup, many surplus stores still sell authentic or reproduction Zeltbarnen or British ground sheets. With just a bit of beeswax or linseed oil treatment, they're as effective today as they were 80 years ago. Some modern bushcraft enthusiasts even sew tie points into the corners so the same cloth can serve as a poncho or tarp, just like soldiers did in the field. There's a kind of forgotten wisdom in simple design and human adaptability. The beauty of the W3 sleeping cloth wasn't about advanced engineering. It was about understanding the human body and the environment. It really proved that warmth doesn't come from technology alone, but from layering smart material use and adaptability. When soldiers wrapped themselves in those treated sheets under open skies, they weren't relying on comfort, they were relying on ingenuity. Today, as outdoor gear gets more specialised and, frankly, more expensive, it's worth remembering that some of the most effective solutions came from necessity, not luxury. The WW sleeping cloth teaches us that sometimes simpler is just better. It invites us to think beyond gear and focus on principles, moisture control, breathability and multipurpose design. Those are the traits that keep people alive, not brand names or the latest fabric. So, why does this lesson still matter for history lovers and survivalists alike? For history buffs, the sleeping cloth is more than just military gear. It's a testament to how humans adapted through creativity under pressure. For survivalists, it's proof that the best tools often come from lessons learned in the harshest conditions. Whether you're camping, prepping, or just fascinated by wartime ingenuity, this old piece of fabric still holds real value. Next time you pack for a trip, maybe try swapping your bulky sleeping bag for a canvas bedroll system. Test it out in the field. See how it performs in wet weather. You'll quickly understand why soldiers from Waited Poos swore by it, and why even modern adventurers are rediscovering its brilliance. If you enjoy diving deep into this forgotten piece of Wutu gear, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning, where we uncover the real tools, tactics and ingenuity that shaped our past and still shape the way we live and survive today. Share this with a fellow history or bushcraft enthusiast and keep the conversation going in the comments. The best lessons of history aren't stuck in museums, they're waiting to be used again.